In this video, we'll discuss the SIC machine architecture. So these are the contents. System software and machine architecture, the simplified instructional computer, then comes the SIC machine architecture. We can see how system software is related to the machine architecture. System software, it is closely related to the system. So it has direct relation with the system hardware. System software and machine architecture. One of the feature which differs system software from application software is machine dependency. System software is machine dependent while the application software is machine independent. So here we can see that some features of the system software also is machine independent. We can consider one example of a compiler. Compiler, what it has to do is it has to generate machine language code from a high level language. So in order to generate the machine language code, the compiler should know the details of the hardware, the instruction formats, the addressing modes, etc. But some features, some functions, if we consider, for example, general design and logic of a compiler, or code optimization techniques that do, do not have any relationship with the hardware. So that is machine independent features. So we can understand that a compiler, which is a system software, it has machine dependent feature and also it has some machine independent features. In order to study the system software, we will consider a simplified instructional computer. In order to learn system software, we have to consider a system. System here means a processor. So nowadays we are using the latest processors like Intel processor, AMD processor, etc. So using that we cannot learn the system software because those processors are very complex. So we will use a hypothetical processor which is SIC, Simplified Instructional Computer, which has lesser instructions which is simplified. It's not a real one. So it has two versions standard model SIC and an extension version SIC XC. So this using this we will learn the system software. These two versions are upward compatible which means whatever programs we are writing in SIC that will work on SIC XC also. Now first we can see the SIC machine architecture. That means it's a processor architecture. Whenever we are learning a processor ar architecture, what all things we'll learn? We will learn about the memory, how is the memory, and then registers, instruction format, addressing modes, etc. So these things define that processor architecture. So this for this SIC machine also, we had to learn all these things. So first we can consider the memory part. These are the specification of the memory. So total size of the memory is 2 raised to 15 bytes and 3 consecutive bytes form a word which means 24 bits. 1 byte is 8 bit so 24 bits forms a word and each location in memory contains 8 bit bytes which means each location can hold 1 byte. All addresses on SIC are byte addresses. Words are addressed by the location of their lowest numbered byte. Since words, one word is of three byte length, but the address it is denoted by the lowest numbered byte. So this is the specification for the memory. So next we can see the registers which are temporary locations to hold the. So these registers, five. There are five registers. Each register is of 24 bits in length which means each register can hold 3 byte of data. These are the registers. First the register is A, it is denoted by 0 which is the accumulator. Accumulator does all the arithmetic operations. Then the second register is the X register which is known as index register. It is used for indexing. Then next one is L which is denoted by the number 2. Then it is known as the linkage register. It is used in connection with the JSUB instruction, jump to subroutine instruction. 
that is whenever this instruction is executed jumping to a subroutine which means it is similar to some proteins are similar to functions in high level language so whenever in a high, high level language the program control goes to a particular function from the main program the return address is stored in a stack similar to this here in assembly language the return address is stored in this register linkage register then next register is a program counter program counter contains the address of the instruction to next instruction to be executed then status word it contains the condition code less than greater than whatever flags that is contained in the status word so that is about the registers so next is the data format data already we know that is it can be an integer data or a character data or a floating point data that is a decimal number so these are the formats available in sic processor so integers are stored as 24 bit binary number this is the format for the integers that is a 3 byte number the negative numbers is represented in the two's complement form again characters are stored using 8 bit ascii code but here Floating point numbers are not used. That means decimal numbers are not represented in this architecture. So this is a data format which has integer representation. Negative numbers are represented as two's complement form. Characters are stored using 8-bit ASCII code. And floating point number is not there in this architecture. See the instruction format. Instructions means for example, we can consider the add instructions, subtract instructions. So in any language, if it is an assembly language or a high level language, we will have instructions. So this instruction has a particular format. So here it uses a 24 bit format. That means each instruction is of length 24 bit. So here this 24 bits are divided as follows. The first eight bits represents the op code. For example, if it's an add instruction, the opcode is add. Then the next bit represents x, which is which means it is indexed addressing mode. And the remaining 15 bits forms the address of the operand. For instructions, we will have an opcode and operand. For example, if it is an LDA load accumulator instruction, which means load to accumulator from this operand address so operand address is a memory address indexing means we will calculate the address by adding the content of the index register to this address field so this is the instruction format only one instruction format is there in sic next is the addressing modes addressing modes means how this target address calculation is done so here there are two addressing modes which is direct mode and indexed mode if the width x is zero in the addressing address format then it is direct addressing if the bit x is equal to one then it is indexed addressing direct addressing means the operand address is the correct target address if x equal to 1 which is indexed mode which means with that address we have to add the contents of the x register which is the index register so this is about the addressing modes next every architecture the most important thing is the instruction set this sic also has its own instruction set which is a reduced one very limited number of instructions so these are the instructions so the first one is the load and store registers. The examples are LDA, LDX, STA, STX, etc. So LDA means load accumulator with the operand address, with whatever content is there in the operand address, loading into the accumulator. LDX means loading into the X register, some value. STA means the opposite of LDA, that is store accumulator content to the memory address which is given as the operand stx also store the register content of the register x to the operand so that these are the instructions which is re related to the loading and storing the registers 
So next one is the integer arithmetic operations. Arithmetic operations includes addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So arithmetic operations it will be having two operands. So one operate operand which is by default it is the accumulate is in the accumulator. The other operand we will give in the operand field. So these examples of arithmetic instructions are add, sub, mul and div. The next is the compare instruction COMP. Compare instruction compares two operands. One operator by default it will be in the accumulator and the other operate, operand will give as the operand value. So compare instruction compares the two operands and the according to that the comparison the condition flags are set. Following this compare instructions there will be conditional jump instructions. So according to which flag is set if it is less than means JLT that jump instruction. JEQ means equal to flag is set. JGT means it is if the greater than flag is set. So according to that these conditional jump instructions work. Then other two type two instructions are there it is related to the subroutine. Subroutine means in assembly language it is similar to functions. So jump to subroutine means from the main program we are going to a different subroutine or different function. So we have to place the return address. It is automatically placed in the register L which is a linkage register. Then after executing the statements in the subroutine it has to come back return to the main program using the R sub instruction. So this R sub instruction which is it is similar to the return statement in functions. So these are the instruction set of the computer. SIC computer. So we have learned the registers, memory, then data format, instruction format, addressing modes and instruction set of the SIC machine which forms the architecture of the SIC machine. The next type of instructions are the input output instructions. The processor has to communicate with the input output the peripheral devices. So the speed of the peripheral devices and the process are different. Processor has more speed compared to the input output devices. So there is an instruction test to device which tests whether the address device is ready to send or receive. If it is ready then less than flag is set. If it is not ready then equal to flag is set. And the instructions read data and write data RD and WD are used to read the data from an input device. WD is used to write the data to an output device and each device has a unique 8-bit code which represents that particular device and the data is transferred from the device to the accumulator. Data transfer is in the form of one byte at a time. So this byte is given to the rightmost 8 bits of the register A. So read data instruction or write data instruction one operand is the accumulator and the other operand is the device. So the data is read from an input device to the accumulator and also same as the data is written from the rightmost 8 bits of the accumulator to the output device. In the next video we can discuss the architecture of the SIC XC machine which is the extended version. Thank you.